everybody, this is Dr. Brian Collison, and today I want to talk about APA style. Specifically, we'll be talking about verb tense, and we'll be talking about how to write in bias-free language, and some other changes that are new to the APA publication, 7th edition. So let's get started. When you're writing different sections of your paper, whether it's the intro or results, discussion, things like that, um, you're going to be writing in different tenses. So personally, I like to think about it as the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. Are you talking about the past, past tense, are you talking about the present, or are you talking about the future tense? So when you're writing in the literature review, like the intro, when you're describing other people's research, what you're going to be doing is writing mostly in the past, te past tense. Researchers found, they concluded, things like that. In the method section, it's previous, um, it's, it's a previous study that you've conducted. You've already collected the participants. You've already analyzed the data. So notice that that is also in the past tense as well. For the results section, again, you've already analyzed the data, past tense. And if you're doing either like a personal reflection um, as an assignment, it's fine to, you know, to, um, to either say like, you know, I reflected or I learned past tense, or if you're currently uh, describing your own thinking in the present, it's fine to shift over to the present tense as well. Sorry about that. Um, in the discussion and conclusion, conclusion section, you're also um, going to write in the present tense. So um, what are the implications for the field right now? Uh, at times in the discussion section, you might also switch over to the future tense if you're talking about future studies and what they should do in the future. Another thing that's important to keep in mind with APA style is writing in bias-free language. So be specific, use appropriate specific modifiers throughout. So if you're talking about, about you know, heterosexual people, then say, you know, don't just say people, say heterosexual people. If you're talking about gay people, be specific. Are you talking about lesbians? Are you talking about gay men? Use the appropriate modifier. Um, also, when you're using appropriate modifiers, it's important to not lose the humanity that, that you shouldn't describe people with the label. They aren't schizophrenics, they aren't drug users. They're people diagnosed with schizophrenia. They're people who are abusing drugs. They're people first. So certainly keep that in mind when you're, when you're appropriately modifying the, the participants that you're talking about. Make sure that you're reducing bias every step of the way. And if you have questions about a specific group that you're writing about, the APA publication manual has so much more information and guidance. Another big change to the APA publication manual, seventh edition, is the singular, the singular use of they. So when you're talking about someone, you normally say, you know, he did this, she did that. But if you don't know what their gender is, if you don't know what their preferred pronouns and how they identify, then you shouldn't make any gender assumptions um, according to APA publication manual. Instead, you should say, they did this, they did that. Even if you're talking about one individual, use the singular they when you don't know he or she. Uh, if you know this individual and you know how they identify, then certainly use he or she as appropriate or they as appropriate. Um, but if you don't know, then according to APA publication manual, you should be using the singular use they. Um, so an example of this, Jen, uh, Casey is a gender fluid person. They are from Azusa and enjoy tacos. We could either know Casey and know that Casey prefers the pronoun they, or if we don't know Casey at all, then we would use the pronoun they until we, we uh, you know, talk to Casey and saw whether Casey preferred he, she, or they. Another thing important about APA style is writing in an active voice. You want to be clear and concise. I know a lot of people when they're new to APA style or new to scientific writing and psychology, they try to be as verbose as possible. They try and drop as much jargon as they possibly can to make themselves you know, seem smart. Good scientific writing does the exact opposite. It is how simple, clear, and concise can I make this statement. And one of the ways it really helps that is writing in an active voice. So there are, are a few different ways to go about it. You can use personal pronouns throughout your writing. I hypothesize that it's okay to use the first person pronoun. 
it's okay with the APA publication manual, but some of your faculty may have preferences to avoid the first person pronoun. So this is a conversation I would have with them, but technically according to the APA publication manual, it's fine, use first person pronouns. And as I mentioned before, write in an active voice. So who is doing the action? Let them lead the sentence and perform the action rather than flipping it into more of a passive way where people are having the actions performed upon them. Um, and that can be kind of confusing, uh, especially if you're getting feedback from papers and it just says like, use active voice. You may not be sure what exactly that means. So I listed a few examples here of active versus passive. So let's practice a few more. A passive voice example, the boy was bitten by the dog. Right, the dog is, is the main instigator of the action here, right? The dog did the biting. And if you were gonna write it in an active voice, you would lead with the dog who's doing the action, right? The dog bit the boy rather than a passive way, right? The boy was bitten by the dog. Active voice is what's preferred within the APA publication manual. But shifting over to more um, psych science examples, the significance of the results are clear for people to see. Way too verbose. You can trim that down and if the results are the subject, like the main focus point of the sentence, let them do the action, right? Results are significant. Or something like, the current author hypothesizes that discriminatory behavior will be a predictable result of people's profoundly prejudicial attitudes. Blech. Right, that's a terrible sentence, it's way too choppy. And what do you mean, right? Let's keep it simple. The current author, is that you? If so, then say I. I hypothesize that. Discriminatory behavior will be a predictable result of people's profoundly prejudicial attitudes. What you're saying is that people's prejudicial attitudes are gonna predict their discriminatory behavior. If that's the case, then lead with prejudicial attitudes and let them do the action here, right? I hypothesize prejudice predicts discrimination. Short, concise, active voice. 